Father, in the name of Jesus, we just come before you, Lord, and Father, we just ask you to take full and total control. Lord, we don't need to ask you to be here because you're already here, Lord. Your presence is already here in this place, Lord. It's in our worship. It's in our hearts. It's in our minds, Lord. I pray only, Father God, that you would captivate every every person's heart here tonight. That your word would come forth with your anointing and it would pierce the heart, Father. That it would impact. That it would, Father, do what you have called it to do, Lord, tonight, Lord. That it would fulfill your purpose, your plan, Lord God. We need you more, Lord. More of you. More of your word. More of your anointing, your spirit, Father. We need it. We're desperate for it, Father. We can do nothing and be nothing without it, Lord God. So we call upon your name for it, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to be reading a little bit out of the book of Romans tonight. But uh, for those of you who take notes when you... When you hear the word, uh, we're going to be, you can entitle this message, The Power of Grace. The Power of Grace. Now, tonight I'm going to attempt to do a little bit of teaching. <laughs> I'm more of a preacher than a teacher as far as my style of sharing the word of God, but tonight. I would like to, you'll you'll see a little bit mixture in there, I'm sure. It always comes out somehow because I get it. I start getting excited. I, I get excited when I read the word of God. How many get excited when you read the word? It just does something, you know. And uh, I start getting excited. You'll notice. <laughs> you'll notice. My volume starts to raise up and I start jumping around up here. And don't worry. Don't, don't call 911. I'm just Getting excited for Jesus. <laughs> but we're going to look in the book of Romans. We're going to start in chapter 5. And we're going to talk a little bit about grace. You know what? I, I just want to give a praise report. Speaking of grace. Um, you know, as I am sharing the word of God here tonight, my 16-year-old daughter is sharing the word in another room with the youth tonight. You know what I mean? So I'm just... I'm excited, and you can clap for the Lord. That's a good thing to clap for, man. If anything, to get a 16-year-old to be in their word and not wanting to be out partying with their friends or on Facebook right now and in the middle of a service, you know what I mean? That's the grace of God. <laughs> and I'm just, I'm just overwhelmed with uh, gratefulness of God's grace over my life and my family's life. Amen. That she would choose because it's her choice, that she would choose God's word a, a, amongst a vast, I mean, the enemy has it all right there on a big smorgasbord, you know, table for them, for the youth, through social media, through, I mean, music and TV and, oh, my goodness, it's just so vast. Well, it's it's such a huge battle today to, as, as parents to be able to, uh, try to compete with these things, you know what I mean? But but when when you have the power of God and the grace of God on your side, there really is no competition. There isn't. There isn't. Amen. Praise the Lord. So my first point tonight we want to talk about and what I want to try to teach about and share with you tonight is we're, we're talking about the power of grace, but first I want to clarify what grace is not. What grace is not. So we're going to read in the book of Romans chapter 5. Uh, we're going to start with verse 18. Is everybody there already? Chapter 5, verse 18. And the Bible reads, Consequently, just as a result of one, tr uh, of one trespass, was condemnation for all men, 
so tra- uh, so I'm sorry, so also the result of one act of righteousness was justification that brings life for all men. Amen. For just as though the disobedience of one man, the many were made sinners also. So also through the obedience of one man, the many will be made righteous. Amen. The law was added so that the trespass might increase. But where sin increase is increased, grace increased all the more. I like that part. Where sin increased, grace increased all the more. So that just as sin reigned in death, so also grace might reign through righteousness to bring eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen? And, and, and if you don't read that, I had to read that a couple of times. It's a little bit difficult to understand, you know. And what he's saying right there, you know, one, one might misunderstand what that means. He, he, what he's saying there is that through one man, he's speaking about Adam, Sin entered the world, okay? Sin entered the world, and through him, all were made sinners. The world was, uh, sin entered the world through one man, amen? We were born into sin. And, but then he's also saying, but also through one man, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen? And his, and see, so through that act of disobedience through Adam, Sin entered, but through the act of obedience by our Lord and Savior, obedience to the Father to come and give his life for our sins, it says we were all made righteous through his one act of obedience. Amen? Do do you guys, so far, you got me where I'm at? Okay? And so it says uh, uh, because of that act, amen, it says that uh, uh, the law was given to us, amen, Let's read that real quick here. So for through the disobedience of the one man, the many were made sinners, so that through the o- obedience of the, uh, of the one man, the many will be made righteous. The law was added so that, uh, so that the trespass increased. Now, it's real easy to misunderstand that, what, 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 what it's saying there in the, in the words. It's saying, wait a minute, we were given the law, we were given the word so that w- sin and trespasses would increase? That doesn't make sense. Why would God give us, but well, that's not what it's saying. It's so that we would be made aware of our trespass. Because if you don't have rules, if you don't have laws, then how can you be breaking the rules, right? Uh, uh, that's what uh, an excuse would be. Hey, you know what? Uh, a, a, a cop might pull you over and s- say, hey, you were doing such and such. And you might be a smart guy and say, yeah, but there ain't no law that says I can't do that. So I wasn't breaking the law, right? That's what you might say. And he might say, well, you know what? I don't care. No, <laughs> but. And, and that's why we were brought the law. We were brought the word of God. As we, would not, uh, we would not yet know we were in sin or in trespasses unless the law was brought. We would not know that we had, we had offended our holy God unless the law was given to us. And so through the law, amen, sin was increased or sin was made known to us. Amen? Amen. So it's important that we understand that the, uh, that the law wasn't, wasn't given us, you know, and and that was it, the law. It was so we might be made aware of our sin. We might be made aware of of our condition before a holy God. Amen? And our condition was that we were a sinful man and that sin had entered upon us through that one man in Adam. And that and so we were born into sin. Amen. And this and this here, the law was given to us so that we would know that we were in sin. Okay. And so I just wanted to clarify that. Is it really easy to misunderstand that? But not only that, it says, but 
But Jesus Christ was, through his obedience, we were given grace. Through his obedience and his sacrifice, amen, our sins are forgiven. We're made righteous, amen. We're made righteous through the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ and our acceptance of that sacrifice to be cleansed and to be forgiven. So we acknowledge that we're a people of sin, right? And that we're in need, amen, to be made righteous because of that sin. We, we, we are enemies of righteousness until then. We are people of sin. Until then. So it says that, that many were made righteous. It says, it says this, through the law, sin might increase, but that when sin increased, grace increased all the more. Grace increased all the more. So this, the sin, there was no sin in our lives that we had committed, that had existed since the day it entered this world, that God's grace could not abound all the more. So it's, it's showing you the hope that we have. It's, it's saying I'm, I, we're not here just to condemn you for your sin, right? Not to just bring condemnation or to tell you you're foul and there ain't nothing you can do about it. You're ugly and your mama dresses you funny. And that's just it. You know what I mean? But he was saying, there's hope. And that was true. Grace. Amen. And that he was explaining to you and me that grace, God's grace, abound far greater than any sin in this world. That there's no history that we, that you or I have, no past that we have involved ourselves in, that we have been a part of, that grace did not abound much greater than. Amen? So the, the law, so we got those points. The law was to reveal sin, but never to overgrow or overpower grace. Amen? So let's read in chapter 6, and we're going to start with verse 1. Or no, yeah, we're going to read verse 1 and 2 first. It says, what shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. Amen? He says, by no means. Certainly not, he says in the King James. He says, we died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Amen? And so this is the point that I'm, uh, this is the reason why I'm bringing this part up. It's because I'm, I was trying to share with you. First, I had to uh, kind of explain the, the difference, amen, of, of grace and the law. Amen? And now we're sharing what sin is, what grace is not. Amen? Grace is not a green light for us to continue sinning. Grace is not an open door for us to continue living, amen, the life that we le led before, to continue in our old ways or in our own habits, amen. In 2 Corinthians, uh, what is it, 5.17, says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. It says the old is passed away, and uh, behold, all has become new, amen, a new creation, passed away, the old. Amen. So, uh, so what should we say then? Amen. Shall, should we, shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? And he says, by no means, certainly not. Grace is not that open door for that. That's not what grace is. Amen. Grace is not our loophole to for compromise with sin. Let me say that again. Grace is not our loophole for compromise with sin. You know what the church today needs to hear that. 
that's a very important message because I, I struggle with my flesh. Who struggles with their flesh? Hey, if we're going to be real. Every day, every day I'm in the world. We live in the world. We're not of the world, but we live in the world. We got to go to work. We got to go to the grocery store. We got to go to the quick trip to get our little thirst busters and our candy. You know what I'm saying? We got to go to the schools. Our kids got to live in the schools, go to school, amen, amongst it. We, we go through our life, amen. I know I'm not supposed to be drinking soda. I don't know what he's laughing about, but <laughs> anyways, you know, we, we're, we're in this world, amen. It's, it, let's be real. We live in this world. And this world is wicked and perverse, and we're around it. If you ever work on a construction site, whoo, man, the, the conversations that, have, that take place, even in the office, at the water cooler, huh? How many have been around the water cooler at work? Some of that little mentiche conversation takes place, you know what I'm saying, about so-and-so and you know what I mean? We live in this world. And it's so easy. It's so easy to get caught up. When we're watching TV and we're flipping through channels and the advertisements come on. And some sexy thing in a little tiny bikini comes on there. And it's not even about that. It's about, uh, I don't know, about hardware or, you know, <laughs> who knows. But it has nothing to do with that. But they're using sex to sell items on TV. You know what I mean? Even the censorship is gone. I mean, I mean, back in the day, they would censor everything. You would never see or hear, you know, I mean, some of the flesh that they show, they show almost everything now. Before, forget about it. You know, the covers were up to here, even on the bedroom scenes, right? They didn't show that stuff. It was a quick, and it was on to the next scene. But nowadays, everything Right? And it's so easy to get those images. You're walking down the street and there's some images walking around you. And it's so easy. I'm, I, can I be real tonight? <coughs> Talk about some real things tonight. Those things are around us. I will be a liar just because I preach to say that my flesh doesn't try to rise up. And sometimes my wife doesn't get me to that place. Or I don't get hurt to that place sometimes. Then my kids don't sometimes get me to that place where I want to, you know, lay holy hands on them. It would be, it would be a lie. I would be dishonest. You know what I'm saying? Is anybody relating with what I'm talking about right now? Amen. And grace is there for us. Grace is there for us, but it's not our green light to continue over and over and over again in the sin. And we know it's sin. We know it is. But we think, oh, we don't want to be all legalistic, and this is not a, a nunnery, and you know what I mean? You're not uh, the padre or whatever. But the thing is, is our God is holy. He is a holy God, and we're not going to be you know what, perfect? That is what his grace is for. But we have to strive for holiness every day and not allow his grace and his mercy upon our lives to be that little, oh, now he'll forgive me. I'll just keep on and on. You know what? Repentance doesn't mean just saying you're sorry. Repentance means making a 180 degree turn from your sin and not just turning from your sin. But walking away from it, headed in the other direction of it, amen? So that if you have a problem, amen, with uh, a certain kind of music that you're listening to, that you turn it around and turn on gospel music and run with it, amen? If you have a problem with certain TV programs that you're watching, that you begin to turn, turn that around, amen, and turn the TV off and read your word and run with it, amen? So important that we understand what grace is not because this is an ongoing epidemic. This is true in so many churches. 
We, we preach, and the pastor likes to say, and I agree with it, even the other ministers that come and share, we're a church, amen. We love you. We want you to love us, but we're going to tell you the truth. We're not going to tickle your ears. We, we, we love you enough not to lie to you, not to sugarcoat it, not to water it down. Hey, when you were in the world, did you like that stuff that had been stepped on 20 times? No, you wanted the good stuff. You want the pure when you went to the bar? <laughs> Did you want that little that little watered down? It was mostly water and like, you know, a tiny bit of little splash of whiskey or whatever it is, that tequila, whatever it is you used to drink. Don't oh come on, don't look at me like that. Like you ain't ever you ain't ever come on. You was praying for God to help you yesterday, huh? Don't lie. Nah, I'm just playing. <laughs> Tell the truth and shame the devil. <laughs> Ah, uh, like, hey man, we had a long day. You want to go and come, huh? Your homies at work and stuff. You know, you deserve a cold one, bro. No, but uh, but we don't allow those things. We we don't allow to justify those things, or uh, because God loves us. You know what? He does love us so much. And the Bible even says, He says, "I would that none would perish." And this is why He's tarried so long. Because he loves us and, and we, he knows we have loved ones, we have children, we have uncles and aunts and homies out there and friends, family, neighbors, coworkers, people that we're praying for, that we're believing for. And the grace of God is here for that. Amen. But it's not, it's not some, a, a doormat that you can walk all over and so many of us have. We've walked all over God's grace and spat on it because we take advantage of of his patience, of his mercy, amen? This is not what grace is. Amen? Amen. Now that we're clear on that. <laughs> let's read a little bit more. Let's read 3 through 14. Amen? 3 through 14. And in chapter, it's the same chapter, chapter 6. Praise the Lord. He says, or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live, let's say it together, a new life. Amen? A new life. If we have been united with him like this in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. For we know that our old self was crucified, amen, crucified with him so that the body of sin might be done away with, amen, and that we should no longer be slaves to sin, amen, because anyone who has died has been freed from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we also will live with him. For we will know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? That's us. That is us. We have died. Amen. We have died and we do not die again. You know what I mean? We, we let the dead be dead. Amen. Don't resurrect the dead. It's good, to, it's good to resurrect into the new man. But don't resurrect the dead stuff, the stuff we want to stay dead, and that's the old man. Let him be buried and, and forgotten. Amen? So amen. Praise the Lord. Um, so what is grace? Amen? What is grace? It's my next point. Uh, in, the, in, uh, in man's definition, grace is simple elegance. Uh, refinement of movement. She moved through the water with effortless, effortless grace. 
Who talks like that, huh? <laughs> Sounds like a, a play or something. Anyways, elega- uh, some synonyms. Elegance, poise, or finesse. So that's man's, that's man's definition of grace. If they only knew, huh? If they only knew what it really was. It says, um, grace, uh, and, and, so, and so grace, amen, and you can underline this, grace is a gift. So we want to we talk about grace, the gift, amen? Grace, the gift. The free and, un, it's, it's a free and unmerited favor of God as manifested in the salvation of sinners and the bestowal of blessings. That's our definition, amen? It says it's the free and unmerited favor of God as manifested in the salvation of sinners and the bestowal of blessings. Did you guys, do you understand what that means? Some of you? Well, I didn't understand it at first, so I'm going to share with you what I found out about it. Because that's some heavy little wording right there, you know what I mean? If you didn't grow up, you know, I wasn't a wordsmith. <laughs> I didn't even graduate high school. I'm d- doing my GED right now. But um, so, <laughs> so unmerited. Unmerited is means, uh, let's, let's go to merited first. That's the root word of unmerited. Merited means it's earned. You know, like if you're in Cub Scouts or Royal Rangers or something like that, they, they would call them merit badges, they, those badges. You would earn a badge, whether it be for uh, uh, building a, a campfire or, or learning, or learning uh, 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 CPR or something like that, and you would earn a badge, and it was a merit badge. You merited that you earned it, amen? And, and so he's saying that this is unmerited grace. In other words, this is, uh, uh, I mean, unmerited favor is what, what I had. And so, so that, that means that you, you didn't earn it. As a matter of fact, you couldn't earn it if you tried. There was no other price to be paid. There was no other way to achieve this grace but through the sacrifice and the obedience that Christ displayed upon Calvary's cross. Okay? So, so there was no way that we could merit this favor. There was no way that we could merit, amen, this, this uh, favor that was given of God. And, ma- and it says it was as manifested. Manifest means that as it rolls out uh, uh, before you, um, how, uh, when it becomes visible. To manifest is, is, is w- uh, when it becomes visible, you know, uh, I might say, I'm a I'm a happy guy. I'm a nice guy. But you're not going to know until I show you something nice or do something nice for you. It manifests in a kind act that I'm a nice guy. You understand? Okay. So it's manifested. Amen. Amen. It's manifested uh, in the salvation of sinners. So, so his grace is manifested, and so that's how he showed it, through the salvation of sinners and the bestowal of blessings, blessings that were given to us. Amen. That's God's grace. You guys, are you guys with me? Amen. So this is what, what grace is. This is the gift, amen, uh, of grace given us. Praise the Lord. Um, so do on uh it's to, it's to do honor or credit to by by one's presence, amen. Dignify, distinguish, honor, and favor. Romans five fifteen says, but the gift is not likely. Uh, let's see, but the gift is not likely. To trespass, for if many died by the trespass of the one. Many, amen, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by grace of, uh, of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to the many. So it's, he's calling it a gift, amen. It's a gift given to us, amen, to the many. A gift is not something earned, amen. A gift is something received and given, 
And so that's uh, uh, kind of a little backup scripture, part of the scripture we already been reading. Examples, amen. Examples of God's grace. Uh, let's look at John 8, verse 3. John chapter 8. Verse 3, I'm just going to read it, okay? The, the teacher of the law and the Pharisees brought a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group, and they said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In, in the uh, law, Moses commands us to stone such a woman. Now what do you say? And they were using this question to trap uh, as a trap in order to have a basis of accusing him. But Jesus bent down and started to write in the ground with his finger. And when they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, if anyone of you is without sin, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he stopped down and wrote in the ground and at uh, at. At this, those who heard uh, began to go away one at a time, the older ones first, until only Jesus, hallelujah, only Jesus was left with the woman still standing there. Jesus straightened up and asked her, woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said, then neither do I condemn you. Jesus declared, go now and leave your life of sin. Amen? And this is a perfect example of that gift, grace as a, as a gift. Amen? It said, it said uh, did, she, did she deserve what they were bringing to her? The law said. It was the law. It wasn't that she didn't deserve to be stoned. She was caught. You know what I mean? They, they, they caught her in the act, they said. So you know what they had Marvin Gaye. She had Marvin Gaye playing, candles lit, and it was happening, Jack. And they caught her. Hubby came home early to surprise. He said he smelled it in the air. The candles. <laughs> he says she don't light no candles for me. <laughs> she was caught. So did she deserve it? Yes, she did. That was the law. Amen. But what happened? She received a gift of grace. Amen. There was no one there that was not that was, that was not with sin. There was no one there that was not worthy of the same condemnation that they offered up for her. Because the Bible says that sin is sin, right? Sin is sin. It does not dif differentiate between what kind of sin, which is worse. It says sin is sin. And it also says that the wages of sin is death. So all of them were worthy and deserved the same judgment. And so what happened was a lot of people don't realize that she was not the only one to receive grace in that moment. But everyone that had a stone in their hand, everyone that was ready to condemn, everyone that was ready to judge, everyone that was ready to take the life, everyone that was watching and caught her in her sin, they were worthy of the stones they, they held. They were guilty as well. So guess what? They received grace first when Christ allowed them to walk away. Never thought of that, huh? Neither did I. <laughs> but then God showed him, showed her. He didn't give her what she deserved. He gave her a gift, a gift of grace. Amen? Praise the Lord. Okay. So... There's also another portion of grace that I want to share with you tonight. Not just grace, the gift, the unmerited favor manifested in salvation. Amen. Manifested as a gift we're not worthy of, we didn't earn or deserve. But also grace and active power. 
grace as an act of power. Amen. Because grace is not just a gift. <coughs> grace is not just God taking pity on you or having mercy on you. It is grace, amen, that empowers you as well. Amen. Let's look at Acts chapter 4, verse 13. And we're going to start wrapping it up. Acts chapter 4. Verse 13. <coughs> Some of you are familiar with the scripture. You ready? We're going to read 13 and 14. Chapter 4. It says, when they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled. Hello. Unschooled, ordinary men. They were astonished, and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. Amen? Grace had empowered these uneducated men to speak the word with power and for lives to be changed. Amen? Grace was an action in this moment. Look at 2 Timothy real quick. 2 Timothy chapter 1. I'm trying to give you a little bit of carne tonight, a little meat, a little, just a little bit to get them teeth poking through and get you, get them chewing muscles moving so you can get a taste and say, mm, 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 the word is good. Amen. Are you there? You, do you guys got that scripture? Or, uh, go ahead and put it up. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Let's start with, we're going to read verse 8 and 9. It says, So do not be ashamed to testify about our Lord or ashamed of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God who has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done let's say that not because of anything we have done but because of his own purpose and what grace amen not because of anything we have done amen examples you know it, it's it's God's grace amen that allows you to speak his word with power Hey, great. Do you think it's because you're such a talented fellow? Amen. That all, the, that all of a sudden people is going to just drop everything in their lives and listen to you? You got another thing coming. Amen. Grace took place when the sea parted for Moses, the children of Israel, and the children of Israel. That was the power of God's grace. Amen. When, when, when David killed Goliath with one stone, that was the power of grace. When Gideon, with only a hundred men, defeated the vast army of the enemy, that was the power of grace. When Peter walked out of the dungeons and prisons, led by an angel through the guards and to his people, that was the power of grace. When he stepped out on water during the storm, when God said, peace, be still, that was the power of grace upon your lives. It was not merited. You did not deserve it, but he gave it to you anyways. Huh? Grace is not just a gift. It is not a, a loophole for, to continue sinning, but it's not just a gift. It's power. Grace is in your, it's in your shield. 
when you can't, when you feel like you can't lift it up one more time and you see the fiery darts of the enemy coming your way and in the name of Jesus, you lift, you strain and you pull it up and you're able to block the, the, the fiery darts of the enemy. That's grace in your arm lifting your shield. Ooh. Grace is in your sword when you're trying, when, you're, when you've been swinging it at the enemy. You've been swinging your sword. You've been battling for your children. You've been battling for your husband. You've been fighting for your wife. And you just can't seem to lift that sword one more time. But the power and the anointing and the spirit of God begins to fill every fiber within you and all of a sudden the sword rises up in the midst of battle and swings one more time. That is the power of grace. Ah. Woo. Right now as I'm as I'm lifting, do you know that I've been fighting this cough and I can't get rid of it. And, and, and I'm tired right now. I want to go and hug the pillow right now. Go mimis. Mm. <laughs> but I found myself before the altars of God. And I said, Lord, let me just preach one more. Lord, let me reach one more. Lord, let me, let me just use me one more time. Lord, lift my heart. Lift my body. Lord, ex express, display, manifest the power of grace tonight. Good timing. Amen. So grace empowers your witness when you're sharing the word of God. Amen. When you lead someone to the Lord, that's grace. Grace is the compassion that you have for the lost when you wouldn't have it any other time. Grace is your ability to father and mother your children. Grace is the ability to lay a loved one to rest when you have it not in you. Amen. Grace is the power to stay up in the wee hours of the night, praying and battling in the spirit for your family, for your church. Amen. It is because of grace we can become mighty men and women of God, warriors for Christ, instead of cowering, defeated people. Because of grace. Amen. As the sound team plays, amen, I just want you to begin to prepare your hearts. If you're not already there, amen. I know this is not something you do not know or have not already heard about grace. It is a it is a simple message. Amen. But it's an essential message for Christians. Because so many times we take advantage and we use grace for what it was not uh, intended. And, and or sometimes we receive the, the gift of grace and we don't realize that it's not just a gift, but it is a tool. It is a weapon. It is empowerment to do what God has called us to do, to be who God has called us to be. Amen. That husband, that wife, that parent, that brother. And so many times, and let me just share this real quick as. As we get ready, if you want to stand, you can already stand. So many times, you know, many of us, we're seasoned Christians. We've been serving the Lord for a good time, amount of time. And we'll serve the Lord, but we'll, we'll struggle. You know, because when we begin to give our hearts completely to the Lord and surrender 100% to the Lord, how many know that we become a target? We become a target. 
the enemy doesn't want to mess with the people that are just sitting back not doing anything. But he loves to mess with him, some leaders. He loves to mess with some potential uh, uh, men and women on fire for God. Some potential pastors, some potential evangelists or children's uh, teachers. Oh, he loves, he, he loves to just get in the way and stop it from happening and say, yeah, what if they would have caught it? And so many of us, we come before God, and we're serving Him faithfully, but we struggle because we're being hit by Him, and we think, how could I ever see? And the enemy even sits there and points his finger, and you want to be a preacher. And you, how could you, how could you tell, how could you even witness with what you're dealing with? That's where grace becomes power. Power to speak to the enemy and say, no, this is what God's grace is for. To be able to overcome this and you. Grace to tell you that you're a defeated enemy. You're a defeated foe. You haven't a leg to stand on. My Christ says that I'm more than a conqueror. Then greater, that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. That means I'm greater than you and everything that's in this world that comes against me. The power of grace is on your side. And if you feel less than enough, that's okay. We are less than enough. That's where his grace comes in. Where your power, where your strength runs out. God's grace takes over, empowers us to do and be who he's called us to be. Amen? We're all in need of God's grace. Amen? But if that's, if that's how you've been feeling too lately, you know, I want, when, we, uh, when I uh, open up the altars, I want you to come and seek him. His grace is right here. These altars for you. For those of you who have not received God's grace as a gift, I'm talking about salvation or accepted Christ in your heart, that's here for you tonight too. Amen? Is there anyone that would receive Christ tonight in their heart? Receive that grace? Is there anyone tonight that would make that decision? That want to? Amen. It means we're all, we all got it. We're all here. Amen. We're all saved. And it's only about finding grace for the next situation, using his grace as a weapon tonight. Amen. Amen. If you want if you want prayer tonight, the, the altar is open. And I'll pray for you or you can just pray on your own. It's up to you. But I'm going to I'm going to just open the altars up for, for prayer right now. Amen. Hallelujah. We're not perfect. None of us are. We need more and more of you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. We need you. Lord, empower us to lift that sword one more time. Empower us to keep lifting that shield. Empower us, Father, to keep fighting, Lord. To be that husband, that wife, that, that father, that mother, We need you, Jesus. I'm going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you, Lord. I thank you for this word that you've given us. I pray that we would take heed and that we would be empowered by your precious, beautiful, wonderful grace upon our lives, Lord. You would have your way, Father, that Every situation, every circumstance represented here tonight, every person, your children here tonight, Lord, whatever they're facing, whatever they're going through, whatever their battles are, because we all have them, Lord, that your grace would be upon them, Lord God, that you would empower them with your wonderful grace. In the name of Jesus, amen. God bless you.